G'day and welcome to the Mac Back Podcast. We're, We're back. back. My name's Jamie Karen. To my left this weekend, or the biggest comedian we have here on the panel, it's my little brother Joe. How are you, Joe boy? Jake, I'm going great, and I won't be holding that title for long because we got some amazing comedians joining us on the panel very soon. And to my right, coming in at six foot one, as he does each and every week, is the baby brother of the pack. Who we call Jinboy Jinboy? Jin how are you? We like to think we're funny on the show, but boys, we got put in our place today here at the WA Comedy Week. Well, you're not wrong there. We're down here at the Recabite on the, the rooftop. rooftop. Sun setting for the WA Comedy Week. We got the opportunity to speak to some absolute legends. Hell yes. Including Zephyr J. Ramones, Mick Gledhill, Tim Kershaw, and a range of other absolute legends. Kings We're all partaking downstairs as we speak for the festival and throughout Perth in the next few months. It's a massive app, so let's get into it. Boys, boys, boys. Mingo. Mingo. How are we all, are we all well? Oh, it's great to be here, boys. This is fantastic. This is a little bit of behind the foreskin type stuff. This is our yes. third outside podcast. The first being obviously at our house, second obviously being at Seasons, and third here at the Record Bite rooftop in I the know. middle of the CBD. Oh. We got the banquets, the fucking Rio Tech. Like, mate, we're, there's buildings everywhere. It's so actually, sick to be up here. We're a part of the skyline. How does it feel? It's actually fantastic to actually look up. People are going to be driving up. past, seeing all these lights set up, and being we're like, we're one of them. What's happening out there? And it's just three virgins sitting on stools, <laughs> just absolutely hanging out. Like I know. Um, boys, we're obviously fortunate enough to be invited <laughs> down here to the wreck of light. We're to perch up here on the rooftop and chat to some of Perth's WA's best comedians. Hell yeah, Australia's S- best comedians, mate. Some Don't undersell They just happen to be from WA. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> some are absolutely <laughs> dominating. Yes. Some are just joining us. A couple of freshies. Fuck yes. Who are absolutely killing it themselves, even though they've only been in the the game for such a small window of time. Yes. And we're fortunate enough to be up here having a chat to them before they do their set downstairs and before they commence the week that is WA Comedy Week. And if you're thinking, like, well, this is a bit of a weird Mac back episode. I don't know if I'm going to tune into this one. Well, if you like having a giggle, more giggles are ensued when you have, what, seven comedians come on your phone. 100%. Yes. In an hour. 100%. Must be nice. Must be very nice. We got to perch up with them live, chat to them about how they got into the industry. Some of the best bombs they've had. Some <laughs> of the best jokes they tell. Yes. And exactly what you should expect if you want to come and see people either at the WA Comedy Festival, at Fringe, or just any of these individuals stand-up bits that they do And am I correct on the regular? This is the first WA Comedy Week. This is. I, I believe it is, yes. Oh, I'm so excited. It's going to be huge. A week full of laughs. <laughs> what can go wrong? Should we rip in? Yeah, let's fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's rip let's in. Let's do it. Alrighty, boys. Super excited to be up here at the Record Bite rooftop here for WA Comedy Week. Yes, the w- sun setting. Oh, it's beautiful. It's what a, a beautiful evening. Beautiful setting we've got here. <laughs> we're also very fortunate to be joined by both Tim and Kate, who are going to be the comedians who are involved in WA Comedy Week this week. Guys, uh-huh. how are you? Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> <Good. We're> fantastic. <laughs> How does it feel? You excited? Nervous? You got a show tonight? Yeah. What are, what are the vibes uh, pre-show? Do you guys still get nervous? Yes. Yeah, we're, we're definitely. <laughs> definitely still get nervous. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's, what's the pre-game? Oh. Usually a podcast. Yeah. Uh, I know. This, <laughs> is, this the is, first is good. Time? This is a good warm-up. Yeah. To be honest, I carry a book around. It's over there. Mm-hmm. I do a Ooh. little note checking. Oh, cool. I don't know why I've been doing it like six years. Like of your bits. Like, yeah, bits, okay. topics, like what I want to do. Mm-hmm. I. I have a plan and then I throw it away every time. That's why <laughs> I'm still nervous. Yeah, every time I have a book, if I bring it on stage to try new stuff, I don't look at it. I just sort of go, I'm holding a book. Um, <laughs> no, but I, I go over it in my head. So I w- might walk around my apartment or in my car and I'll say the set out loud um, and because I, I, I write stuff down. But it sort of sometimes turns into like a conspiracy theory paper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, talking. Right. yeah like it's it. just like arrows and next page. So I just prefer to just talk it out. And then, um, and I also, I got a theatre degree. So sometimes I'll do like <laughs> warm-ups. You just I'll throw your like, arms oh, in yeah. the air? Yeah, <laughs> I just throw it out. And I'm just like, I'm not the pheasant plucker. I'm the pheasant plucker. Son. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know, just to, you know, get my mouth ready. Wow. That, was, that was a good segue earlier. You, um, you mentioned conspiracy theories. And I know, Tim, you do a lot of um, yeah. stuff yes. about that. Tim Foyle hat. Uh, I was wondering, <laughs> so we're, we're not, we don't really do too much conspiracy stuff here on the podcast. But I don't I was think wondering, we ever have. I was wondering. Really? You guys look like three hardcore conspiracy <laughs> <theories. laughs> It's very surprising to me. Yeah, I was wondering if you had one. So obviously, if you get into that world, you know, some are pretty crazy. Um, but I wondered, what was the craziest one that you think actually potentially could be true? Here we go. Wow. Well, do I do a, a whole 10 minutes on the moon landing. 
Yeah, okay, right. So, and that's got to be one of the craziest because, mm. like, it was so out there, you know? They just, like, well, it depends if you thought that they did fake it or not. <laughs> but I don't actually have an opinion at the end of my jokes, you know? Like, but I do like to argue Swear. both sides. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah, right. I think that's the craziest one, right? Faking a moon landing? Because I, I, I do remember reading about it. My the big the big one that gets me that I can't explain is the, the flag waves. Is that yeah. right? There's flag waves. Joe's a scientist. Why, why is the flag Joe's waves? A uh, I believe it was because of solar winds. Solar Ooh. winds. So um, now now we've got questions. I'm like, <laughs> no <yeah>. way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so do you have a stance on way. it? Um, if you're to lean one yeah, way or, or the other, off the record, but on our record. <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, I'm, I've got to be on the record by now. I don't think it happened. I mean, that's no. crazy. Oh, really? No. It Look definitely. It. I, I think it definitely happened. Ha- uh, maybe they lied. Maybe, but I think. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> no, but I think like maybe to beat the Russians because yeah, yes. like I, I would yeah like I, but I think it definitely happened. If this like, is the nuance of it. I think yeah. they went to space, but maybe at that time they didn't land because like this isn't in the show, but you know. This is the inside first time that you did it, you wanted to film it and then beam it back live yeah. to well, everybody was, in the world, was, and there was, was no but failure. But it was a dick measuring contest. No, no, they knew failure. The president had a, like a speech for when it went bad, and we know. And that I'm pretty sure were happy they recorded the rest of it, and then if it went but bad, it was the same <laughs> when they had like the, you know the '80s, you know that space one where everyone was watching it live and then just watched it blow up, and all these kids at school just had to go. My English teacher died. Like mm. that happened on live <laughs> television. I saw. I, I part of me goes. I think uh, America would rather <laughs> shit on the Russians, do it quickly, and then spend <laughs> all this money while like people are homeless. Like yeah. I could, that feels like an. Um, That's know, the accuracy I mean, coming into yeah, it. Yeah, just going like, yeah, let's go to the moon. What about <laughs> the homeless? Fuck them. Like you know, there's none on the moon. Yes, yeah, no homeless on the moon. Yeah. yeah. See, at least it's a conversation starter. You know, it's like a nice place to start from. Yeah. yeah. And then you can work from there anyway. That's Have you ever got like point. mad heckled? Because I know some yes. people get really aggressive. <laughs> <That's> just, yeah, <laughs> straight away. <laughs> I know. I yeah. know some people get really aggressive when I. I bring up the whole space space landing thing. Yeah. Has anyone ever been like, dude, shut up? Uh, yeah, or, or like the entire crowd goes silent. Because <laughs> they think the I'm 100% stops. serious. No, like comedy is about being serious, not flip-flopping and whatever. It's not about what you actually think. Yeah. Especially yeah. if they're going yeah. to a comedy show and it's like Tim Foyle and then they're really surprised. They're like, wow, I'm, yeah. I'm really thrown <laughs> by his fucking views. Nuts. No, those, yeah. people, those people, like when it gets to festival season, those 10 people per day are totally into it. <laughs> It's the other 60 that don't come. <laughs> 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 That's your demographic. Just go on. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so how do you find doing more like festival type shows or ones where, you know, it's a bit more your sort of like your actual crowd? Um, I'm still trying to find a crowd. Um, <laughs> <laughs> be my crowd. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I think it's good because uh, I learned to do more at festivals. There's more opportunities to just like do five minutes and give yeah. it a go, but also try weird stuff like... In, I guess in some venues, you're, people are coming in and they want to watch something. Well, at least, say, for festivals, you can go, I want to try something a little bit different. Um, yeah. And people are more accepting of that. And yeah. you can, like, give a go. I yeah, yeah. I like the idea that you can theme a show. That's yeah. what I love about it. So, like, I'll have a conspiracy show. I have a chef show because I was a chef for 15 years. Oh, wow. And that's all hospitality stuff. And that's a different crowd that you can talk about different stuff. Mm. And, then yeah. I, and then I have, like, a flannel panel show with like friends that I've done comedy with regionally for years Amazing. and that's a different show again so yeah, that's I like theming it you know well that's the thing because yeah for fringe shows like we've got funny stories to tell in the closet and that's literally we wanted to cater to something like yeah. that because we were like that'll bring in a particular audience compared yeah. to necessarily uh, like an open mic night or just a general night and you get to go down that avenue more like we see each other do comedy a lot sometimes yeah. the crowd will be like oh you know I'm not into this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're like, this person's really funny. You're not yeah, into yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But, but you can talk about the same topic for a longer time, and I yeah. enjoy that. Yeah, you've normally you've only got five minutes to, like, win the crowd over. Um, yeah. And yeah. sometimes yeah. it just, like, it. yeah, they'll be like, I'll say some queer stuff, and it'll just go... Like, literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally, and they'll just go... Ugh. Um, so, yeah, you don't have that time. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. There you go. All right. How was the... W- were you a chef, did you mention? Yeah. Where are? What, what were you doing? I'm from Melbourne. Yeah, okay, right. Yeah, I w- went around the world chefing. Sick. 15 years. And why'd you throw your hat in? Because it's a terrible job. <laughs> 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 like, it's I really bad. Like, now that I do comedy and I can, like, sleep in and stuff, it's yeah. like, <laughs> I can't believe I did it for so long. 
and and fine dining as well. Not like the other, that's what the show's about, like Gordon Ramsay esque. Oh, right. Oh wow. So you built your way all the way up, and then still went fuck uh, this. I'm yeah, out. I worked for all the big guys in Australia. Yeah. Yeah, I worked for George when he started Master Chef, and they used to bring everyone into the kitchens and the camera crews and stuff what? like that. Oh wow. Oh yeah. my god. And you were just cooking and going, I hate. Yeah. This. While he was smiling, I was doing all of his work. Yeah, yeah. I bet he was. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the one you weren't getting paid for it? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. In the show, bro. Come <laughs> down. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's huge. And so, both of you, what what made you start to get into comedy and um, because you know, actually pursue it as like a career? Um, I during a lockdown 2019, I thought I should maybe feel like I've done something. So I just did a, a comedy writing course, and then they said do stand up. And I did it, and at the end they had five minutes, and I did it. And people laughed, and then someone said, do you want to do that five minutes here? And I went, and then someone watched me and went, do you want to do those five minutes? And then I just sort of started doing it, and I really liked it. And um, it sort of snowballed from there through, like, COVID. And because no interstaters could come in, um, it meant that who else were they going to (laughs) ask? So I just had to, like, I could work on my stuff more. So I'm still, like, a baby comic um mm. i think what about what about you um one of my friends stole one of my jokes like party jokes you know when you're just with the yeah, boys yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. and he did it on stage and it got a really good round of what applause was, what was the joke oh it was actually a very hack joke a koala having chlamydia's joke yeah classic yeah. And now i see it everywhere like and then it went well so that just put something in my brain it's like i could do that and then i thought well yeah i'll try Wow, and, and that was it. And then, well, then it took a little while. It was like a challenge for a little bit. Yeah. But then I realized, oh, this is really for me. Like, you know, grabbing an idea and then immediately that night trying to plug it into people's brains and get them on board is like a really addictive thing and after yeah. a while. And you're by mm. yourself as well because, like, I, I've, I started in improv and, like, in theatre and it's very much about, like, you're with other people, you're bouncing off other people or you're playing a character. Yeah. Um, you're playing a character, I guess, on doing stand-up, but it's... It's such a different thing to have your idea stand on stage and throw it to people and it's just you. So it's really like, yeah, it's a very yeah. powerful uh, and fun Yeah, and like other do. art forms, you know, you got to paint a picture for five days or you got to write a song, takes a while. Yep. Comedy can just happen right then. It's very instant. Bam. And you, you get know? immediate feedback as well. Oh, it's yeah, you yeah, know yeah. if it's shit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 They'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even that becomes addictive a little bit, you know, like that, the that feeling. Yeah. yeah, the risk of the adrenaline. So coming from chefing, I needed an adrenaline hit as well yep. and a risk. So that that is yeah. a big part of it. That's fantastic. Yeah, how do you know if your stuff's shit? Or like, <laughs> like how, the how do silence you know, like, that you <laughs> hear? Yeah, but like yeah. before you perform, like when you're writing it, you're like, this is gold. And then sometimes you do it and you're like, oh, yeah. Like, do you know silver. during the writing process, or is it very much like throw no. at the wall and no, say? No, because if it makes you laugh, you go, oh, that's. that's good. I mean, sometimes you might go, oh, that's crap. Like, but I think if you think it's funny, I think that's the worst when you're like, oh, that's great, and you give it to an audience and they're like. <laughs> I don't get it. And maybe <laughs> yeah. sometimes you need to be in an avenue where people will, like you can say it and they will, or, or maybe the idea is interesting. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you And that's where the work happens. Like one yeah. night, it works amazing, and then the next yeah. night it's terrible, and then you're in a conundrum. Yeah. You're like, what do I do about that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I did a set where it was like in front of like, you know, a couple hundred or so people, and then I went to a group of like 20, same set, and it completely bombed, and that was my first time because I'm so new, and I went, yeah. oh, okay. And I learned from that, but it's something yeah. that you... You have to learn by the Because if you do it, yeah. if you yeah. do it to the crowd where it bombs first, you might you just never try it again. It. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And when you say completely bombed, <laughs> yeah. does that mean zero laugh, or does that mean like a few giggles but not enough to satisfy you? No, <laughs> no, the giggles, a few giggles is okay because they might get it, but it's the it's the pity giggles or it's yeah. The like sometimes you feel that like the air gets sucked out of the room. <sighs> How does it feel? <laughs> uh, like if. It, it, the first couple of times, it's horrendous. Yeah, yeah like it could be real. Like you know, have you, did you ever have that nightmare um, where you're back at school <laughs> and you realise that there was an exam and you didn't prepare for it or, like, you're naked or everyone's going, why don't you know? You mm. should know. And you're like, I don't. And everyone's staring at you it and was, then you wake up and you're like, thank God. It was a nightmare. It did happen last week. Well, yeah. there yeah. we go. Okay, then you'll <laughs> that get it. It's that kind of, it's that kind of feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think there it's to do with, like, the fact that you're getting on stage and you're putting your hand up and saying, hey, I am funny, <laughs> yeah. and then now this is funny, is yeah. totally different to like hanging out at a yeah, party true. and just yeah, being right. like, Oof. Yeah, when you have like a mate that they go, oh, all my friends think I'm funny, and they hop on stage and you f- I, y- your heart goes to them because then the rest of the crowd's like, we don't know you. We yeah. don't know it, like, why, you know. And yeah. yeah. But yeah. if you are having fun, that tends to win it over. Yes. Yeah, it right. look like you're having a good time. That's yeah. fair enough. <laughs> On the inside, you're dying. Well, hopefully there's no <laughs> bombs this week. Where can people yeah. see you both this week for WA Comedy Week and then in the future? Where can people in Perth oh. see uh, you? you got to plug Fringe shows. Tim Foyle Hat at Fringe. Yep. 
I have a showcase, the flannel panel, cool. and I have that hospitality show called the Hospitality the Show. Big That's three. fantastic. I accidentally am in a lot of stuff for WA Comedy Week. Uh, so, I mean, I've got the showcase tonight. I'm in the, the Pride Gala on a Thursday. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking not at in you. It. I'm, I'm totally not in <laughs> it. Uh, no, on, uh, yeah, uh, no, on Friday, Thursday, oh, cool. I'm down the Fremantle Comedy Factory. I'm on Todd Talks and uh, Improv D&D um, on Sunday. But uh, for Fringe, I'm also doing uh, Funny Stories to Tell in the Closet with Abe's uh, Robins and we're doing a, a two-hander sort of stand-up night in Fringe. So cool. you don't have to be part of the, the, the queer family to enjoy it. So, <laughs> of course uh, not. Yeah, yeah, we, we uh, saw you yeah. do a five at Oasis. And yeah. you, some of your bits were, were queer. Yeah. I was fucking dying. Like, shit, yeah, so it was good. so good. Yeah. That's <laughs> good. Yeah, I'm yeah, glad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want, yeah, does it, yeah. You don't have to, like... <laughs> we to <laughs> to it. I don't yeah, know. Put it on a T-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's yeah. fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on the MacPack Podcast live from the Recobite. Yeah, thanks, boys. thanks for Cheers. having us. Cheers, guys. Alrighty, boys, we're back here at the Recobite on the rooftop for WA Comedy Week. The sun's actually starting to set. It's either the sun's setting or you've turned more lights on. <laughs> <laughs> it Bit of both. Feels like it got brighter, even though it got later. We're drinking some beautiful feral brewing. Bruce. Oh, yeah. This is a brand new one. This is the Extra Pale Ale, and we are fortunate enough to be joined by Miko and Taylor, who are Hello. part of, the, again, part of this week's WA yes. Comedy Week. <laughs> Thanks couple for of, having us. A couple of absolute legend comedians. Yeah. Guys, how's things? Oh, so good. We're, yeah, really relaxed. Yeah? yeah. yeah. Rising stars, man, we're stoked. Yep, positive vibes. <laughs> yeah. 55, I'm a rising star. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So <laughs> Nothing's <we're> rising at 55. <laughs> 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 That's the only one I'll take. That's man. very sad. Yeah. No, we're really good. We're really, yeah, we're, everything's fine. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, yeah. we're good. We're good. Thank you. We're good. Thank you. We have a little bit less on the line tonight than you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, this is our big moment. This, <laughs> this is it. You're well, living it. You're doing all right. <laughs> we only bomb to you if we bomb. Yeah, yeah we, if, we, if we bomb, we just will delete the audio. <laughs> <laughs> you get a three way backup bomb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, what are the plans for this week? What sort of shows have you got? What can people expect from your shows? If you're enjoying this week's episode of the podcast, the best thing that you can do to show us a little bit of support is to share it with your mates. Whether it's a, a story on Instagram, Ooh. a private message to a pal, a DM, slide into those DMs, do whatever you need be, or even just like message your mum and be like, these guys, they swear a lot, but like... I prefer Gmail as they, well. They Gmail mean, works. Yeah, Gmail is good. Gmail is good. It's slow. Like, it's a very slow and formal I way. I click on any link I get. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. Fair enough. Um, so, yeah, chuck it on your Instagram story or send it to a mate. But whatever you do, we just want to grow this little baby pack. Fantastic. And then every week you can chat about the pack with your pack. There you go. Exactly. Uh, well, tonight we're going to be with another group of people who are... Up and rising people, and we got Peter Rosethorn, who's yeah, MCing. Yeah, Pete. Uh, I'd be happy to just carry the drinks with him <laughs> MCing. Uh, he, he's a great dude. I've uh, done a couple of gigs with him. But overall, we're kind of everyone's kind of prepping for Fringe. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, that seems to be the vibe. Yeah, but this initiative is probably the best initiative I've seen so far because it's more like about the comedians locally. Yep. Whereas the others are kind of like more of a franchise. Yep. Yep. Uh, Climb. But... Yeah, I th- I'm really stoked about this uh, initiative. It's great. Yeah, I'm all over it, like uh, a grog vomit on a tricot roll. You know? <laughs> 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 Bit of a generational gap there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this is my only show of the week. During okay. the so I'm really excited. Yeah. Yep. Like, like you said, everything's on the line. <laughs> everything's fine. Um, and... Uh, I've never performed in that in that room yep. before, um, so that's uh, again I'm fine. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, it is it is really great because um, uh, just a whole week, and I get to go to all the other events as yep. well. So yeah. it's like nice. Q and A last night, he was really good. Um, and yeah, I'm just I'm actually really surprised I'm on this lineup. Let's be real with that. Have you done <laughs> much stand up previously? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've done a little bit for like the last few years, but cool. I yeah I just feel really lucky to be here. Yeah, cool. so grateful. What's what's your kind of niche? What what, what do you go towards? Um, <laughs> oh well, you're killing that uh, animation at Scarborough. Like you he just really likes it. this one bit I did about country music at the gym. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Does it relate? Are you a country music I at the gym I'm sort from of the country. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, yeah. Never been to a gym. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so country music. I can more. relate to yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I felt tired at the end of it, <laughs> yeah. uh, other than entertained as well. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, no, um, no, I'm just really, really excited to be here tonight, so, yeah. Fantastic. What is the setup for tonight? How long are we going? Five. 
Yeah. Everyone's on tight fives. Yeah, it is only five. Um, I was going to do like 12 punchlines because I normally do about 12 slammers. <laughs> but I think I'm going to talk about how my mum gave me the sex talk while she castrated a horse. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad I picked this duo. Yeah, and, um, and then my dog like oh, ate God. the testicles. <laughs> and man, um, wow. I feel full now. I don't need dinner. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We are, yeah. we are so similar, you and I. No, we I've got plenty of others. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a true story. It's a true story. Um, <laughs> Mum grabbed Probably a handful of the horses, Jats crackers, and <laughs> just lopped it off in one hit. Uh, horses lying down at the time, like he was having a little bit of a nap. Uh, didn't even give it a little bit of a kick, nothing. He just worked through it. And then she said, you know, you got to treat people with respect, Mick, otherwise this is going to happen to you. Oh, so it was a life lesson. Yeah, well, and, then, right. and then the dog swallowed the balls like there were a couple of Tic Tacs. Wow. And if that didn't convince me, <laughs> that's only <laughs> did. Uh, but my mum, yeah, she's she's a farmer's wife and, yeah, she's tougher than Hesh and Undies. Um, <laughs> but she's a top bird. Yeah. That's his whole set. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Taylor. It'll do well. It'll do well. <laughs> I think that's why we get along, because she's a lot like my mum. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable dog. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's Bravo. elite. Um, a master How did work. you guys get into comedy? We asked the other two how they got into comedy, and they had some very very different pathways. And uh, I imagine you two, just based on the, the small chat we've had, <laughs> you've probably got very different pathways as well. I hope, I hope we really do. Um, uh, I always wanted to do it. I just I was someone who had no self-confidence for most of my life. But um, we had a, where I used to work, they decided to do like a stand-up comedy night. Which okay. Is and where, where did you used to work? Uh, what, what I worked for the an health insurance fund. Yeah, okay. Shout out to HBF. Nope, that's <laughs> <not fun. laughs> smaller. Um, no, but, um, it was really good, and I was surprised because it was—it's such a weird thing to do. But the the CEO was really into stand up. Okay, so yeah, right. And I was one of two girls that got up, and there were ten guys around that amount, and I ended up going up. It was the best, though. I did. I didn't. Ha- I didn't realize about time limits or anything, and I did like twenty minutes apparently. Yeah, right. About my first <laughs> period. Nice. And like people were in tears, and I had the best time, and I finally was like, yeah, I, I really enjoy doing this. And then I did the course, Matt Stores course that he does um and then yeah from then on i just kept trying and realizing that you can't do 20 minutes so five (laughs) minutes is actually really hard and i really respect that yeah right did you condense the story or go with the brand new bit i haven't really condensed it yet i've tried to use bits of it but it's just such a it's just it just deserves so much more time um because i'm a storyteller so i struggle to my favorite do five minutes so that's why i'm still beginning (laughs) hard to tell a good five minute story yeah what about yourself um, so I go. thought I would fit in the. <laughs> 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 um, you like the horse story? <laughs> Bring the pony up. Um, <laughs> I've gone off track here. Um, <laughs> so I thought I would fit in the comedy in the comedy scene because I I'm emotionally bankrupt. Um, <laughs> That's a know, prerequisite, isn't it? These days. <laughs> I went to the Brisbane Hotel with my cousin and her husband. Yep. Uh, show around the town. So let's go to comedy and I. This will be it'll be sick, right? <laughs> Everybody suck. The whole lineup. I said, these people suck. <laughs> Drop some names. Some of them are my friends. <laughs> 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 One of them gave Peter up. Peter Rose thought. Right? <laughs> 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 and he was like, if you can do a better job, what are you going to have to do? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, fucking oath. So six weeks later, I went up and did a gig at the Brisbane. And, and it kind of went better than I expected. But I talked about dogs <laughs> rather than the military. I didn't talk about the military until yeah, okay. a year after. Because it's too confronting. Like, yeah. I, I can't articulate it any nicer than what it is. You know, like... One time, this is no joke, I was having a poo in the middle of nowhere, right, in the jungle in Bougainville Island. This pig comes out of the <laughs> jungle out of nowhere and just drives his head under my bum. Uh, <laughs> like, I've just finished the poo. I put not even halfway pants out of my legs. This pig's not just gone. <laughs> 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 Shit's gone. Right, I've got my pants up. And then my boss walks in. And he sees this pig walking off, and I'm pulling my pants up. There's no shit there, right? He goes, what's going on here? Did you have sex? Did you have, were you intimate with that pig? <laughs> like, you fucking wish. I said, no, a gentleman does not kiss and tell. <laughs> <laughs> that's a true story. I won't <laughs> Oh, that's yeah, it. That's how he goes yes, to comedy. Yes, I was a dead. <laughs> so <laughs> after all that, my, co- my cousin dared me, and then it went crazy from there okay right that's yeah, fantastic yeah, yeah. yeah and you were in the army prior to that so i served in the australian army and the royal australian air force thank you right yeah, and then i went back to home i went army air force army and all up about 30 years 
and I was on the over the horizon radar for my last 12 years, you know, the early warning system. Yep. Yep. So my background is communications, that kind of thing. Yep. And it's just a HF radar that detects aircraft and shipping, you know, when the boat's coming down. Yeah, yeah okay. The Liberal government was in, you know, you did all that. Yeah, cool. Um, but comedy's way better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah. I mean, when you bomb, I mean, that's fine to bomb. You know, yeah. when you kill, that's fine to kill, right? <laughs> in the military? Eh, <laughs> <Yeah>, not so. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So there where you can go. people see you post-WA Comedy Week? Where's the best place for people to go to uh, check out I'm your stuff? I'm actually going to be in Townsville on the uh, 8th of December. Yep. I'm going to be doing the Mandra Comedy Show on the 2nd of December. Huge. And I think I've got some mind site gigs in between. Oh, so cool. Oh, nice. We're just going to do this, mind sites, and then Townsville and Mandra. Yeah, fantastic. And then Christmas, yeah. Sounds like you found your demographic amongst those locations as well, just quietly. Are you calling me a bogan? <laughs> 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 is it right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it is. You're true. It is. It's like uh, when you go to America, you have to rewrite all your stuff so they're on board with it, right? Yeah. Mm. So I connect with bogans, <laughs> miners, Military people. And Mandrians. Uh, old people who hate everybody. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, anybody. Like it's, um, it is. You kind of have to create your own path in comedy once you get your feet, right? Yep. Once yep. you get like um, 45 minutes, hour of material, that's good. Off you go on your own. Yeah, Get away right. from the open mic rooms. Go to America. It's a land of opportunity. People will love you. Australian comedians are the flavour of the month over there. Mm. Did you go to America? Yeah, I just got back from the Burbank Comedy Festival. <laughs> oh, cool. It oh, was wow. sick as. My head just exploded <laughs> every day. Met heaps of people. It was the coolest thing I ever did. Like 200 of the best comedians in America. Jay White, myself and Sean Conway got selected yeah. for that as well. Yeah, cool. And we went, man, we're going, we're going to go over there. So we went over there. Best time. Awesome people. Yeah. Unreal. Fuck Gotta yeah. go there. What about yourself, Taylor? question again <laughs> 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 something about a pig or something yeah. Yeah. no where where can people find you where can people go and check out your stuff yeah um so to tba <laughs> got nothing at this point in the future um i'm like a I just kind of jump on things yep. when i get cool. the opportunity um so yeah just i guess i'll post it on my instagram which has plug it yeah plug plug it. It. i've got like 300 followers so i'm not gonna let's go <laughs> 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 301 <laughs> after this yep, that's <laughs> <right>. <laughs> yeah. only, only one of us are gonna follow you there's three of us sitting here <laughs> that's fine i remembered all your names <laughs> okay, they're not good with math i yeah. think yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic well thank you guys so much for joining us here on the mac bag podcast from the record bite rooftop for wa comedy week thank you so thank much. you you guys are heaps of fun thanks yeah, thank thank you. You. Alrighty, boys, the sun is definitely setting now and the, the lovely lights. Hopefully, you won't be able to tell from my. The lovely yeah, lights. <laughs> great gaffing, though. Look absolutely you fantastic. Know, when I was sitting over there, mm. I was like, uh-huh. oh, wow, it's the, it's the golden hour. Everyone's lit so nicely. And then I noticed the giant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the sun is gone. Four it's huge yeah, lights. Yeah. Have wow, the it's sun's been right setting now. for hours. <laughs> 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 boys, we're incredibly privileged to be joined by Alice and Zeva, who are again two comedians who are taking part in WA Comedy Week. Down here at the record bar. Mm. How's things, guys? Good, good. Yeah, good to be here. Good to be doing jokes and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Oh yeah. How long have you guys been in comedy for? Uh, a couple of years, but never particularly intensely. It's always just been a bit of a hobby for me. So yeah, I cool. Yeah, cool. Do like maybe a spot or two a month. Um, whereas some people actually that make an effort. <laughs> doing twenty-four shows. A year isn't an effort. No, well I said that's a couple, a, that's I said almost a, couple, a month gonna, of shows. I would say one at show most. a month. Yeah, <laughs> at most, that's a maximum. What about you, Zeppo? Still sick. Uh, a few years. I started about four years ago. So I you're putting, you're making an effort, is what I'm hearing. Is well, that? Well, I tried to. <laughs> for the first few years, I was trying to gig multiple times a week, and then um, took it really seriously. Started running my own shows. Cool. And then I kind of just got a bit lazy, and <laughs> kind of like Alice just thought, mm. yeah, when it's that's fun. That's what put me off, to be honest. Yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. What What are your shows? What can people expect from your shows when they're up there? I don't know how to describe what's my your, jokes. What, what's <laughs> your niche? Uh, you it's just theme? my thoughts and feelings. Uh, Classic. I would say I, I try and do jokes that I, I feel like I, I would like to share some thoughts that I think people might have had. Okay. Mm. And then they think that that thought was unique to them. And then mm-hmm. you say it and then everyone laughs guiltily because they're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, yes. yes. I, I also this. do that when I'm on the toilet and I thought <laughs> I could <laughs> anyone. That's go. fantastic. Alice, that's so altruistic. My approach is I just talk about myself. <laughs> and I hope that something in that is funny for someone else to hear. Mm. <laughs> that's me too. I do love talking about myself. 
<laughs> we try. That's, yeah. What's that's your favorite sure. things about yourself? <laughs> um, Other than I j- like these shoes that I got today. Okay. Yeah, I noticed okay. them before. Yeah, nice. yeah, tangible yeah. objects. I bought them. I bought them. Yeah, from, yeah tangible <laughs> yeah. material goods. Not your Material goods. Yeah, I bought these today, so they're doing. They're doing good. They're flash. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah four different colors. Yeah. Five different colors they're, on the Dunlop volleys. They're volleys, and they were seventy-five bucks, which I think is pretty good for a shoe. Yeah, it's yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> for a while there, volleys really had a stranglehold on the market. Mm. But did. not so much now, but we, you know, we could bring I feel them like back. In the, in the 1950s, they had a stranglehold <laughs> and they're back. They're back. They're back. <laughs> they're back. Courtesy of Alice and her sponsorship with yeah, Volley. Yeah. Shout out to Volley. What about yourself, Zeppo? What's your favorite oh. feature about yourself? God, you sound like my therapist. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think, to be honest, it might be, it might be my name. I okay. hated it as a kid, but I like it now. Can because you spell it for me? Uh, I'm not sure I can. <laughs> <laughs> no, I go by Zeppo, Z E P P O. Cool. Um, but that is actually short for Carapetsi Kenneth Zeppo. Wow. Wow. Okay. Right. That's Interestingly, a, is that a first name? It is just my first name. Oh. Whoa. And what I found out when I was 10 years old. Jesus. How many is, letters is that? Just quickly. It's 21, including <laughs> a hyphen. Jesus. Yeah. You would have. Good you password. Would, you even <laughs> got the special <laughs> character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why they waited till I was 10 to tell me my full name. But my parents, because they're African, I actually don't have the accent to pronounce my own name. So even what I said to you is not even close yeah, to right. an actual <laughs> thing. I can't do it. Shit. I'm just, uh, I got this, this white voice. <laughs> <laughs> so, so were you born you here? Uh, in Hobart, yeah. Yeah, okay, sick. Yeah, so I, I sound like this, but I look like this. <laughs> <laughs> so before you settled on Zeppo, obviously you had a le- lot of letters to work with. Was there a few iterations before you landed on a combination he, you were happy with? He, yeah. actually, yeah. he took off a letter for each year that he was performing. Yeah, <laughs> so, it down so next year is Zeppo. Yeah, next, next year is going to be Zepp. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out there is also a, a historically famous comedian called Zeppo already. So Prick. I have a very unique name except for the one thing I needed to be unique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that did come up when I was doing my research, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's wow, the first this guy's result. really famous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from like the 30s as oh, well. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, the Marx brother, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> really he was famous also and dead, but he's going to be on our podcast. Yeah. He was also the least liked of the Marx brothers. Yeah, because the only one I hadn't heard of. Yeah. Yeah. He's Even less like than Carl? Yeah. He wow. w- who are the Marx, <laughs> who are the Marx brothers? Um, it's like Groucho and Zeppo and another Harpo. one. The, um, he was the <laughs> fourth cool. of the three Marx brothers. That's okay. how much they didn't like him. And what do they do? Are they comedians? Yeah, sort of. It's like, uh, it's like what are the chances? Um, visual comedy, like physical comedy and oh stuff cool. like that. Right, A yeah. bunch of Mr. Beans yeah. running yeah. around on stage. <laughs> But I'm, I'm carving out my niche, trying to reclaim the Zeppo name <laughs> yeah. for myself. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so nice. Step. First step towards it. So your your metric is just be more famous than the Marx Brothers, and then effectively, you'll have made yeah. It. Well, basically, all their fans will die in about maybe like ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can sneak just a, There's just that one you're waiting yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get him. We'll get him. Uh, so I I noticed that on your Instagram, you've got your um like web comics art stuff that you put up, oh. and I noticed that a lot of them. Um, sort of have a bit of political like message sort of to them. Mm, I'm officially edgy now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I was I was wondering. Um, I guess I wanted to ask you about like y- using comedy through like other forms and stand up. Like, how do you approach it sort of differently? And also in like using that those avenues to sort of promote like a message. Mm. Do you do that in your stand up, or is that something you stick to in your like art? Um, it's mostly the art, actually. Um, I wish I could say that I was doing more comedy that mattered, for lack of a better phrase. But really, yep. again, I just talk about myself, really. The comics, I love that you did your homework, by the way, Joe. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but the comics were written during, uh, during lockdown. Yeah, so right. um, I'm not that great an illustrator. And so it took me like half a day to make each one. Yeah, okay, right. And yeah. comedy just has a better return on investment, like doing stand-up, rather. Yeah, laughs are better than yeah. likes, yeah. Yeah, doing yeah. spending like six hours to make one comic that gets like four likes—it was not worth <laughs> it. <laughs> it is something I enjoy about comedy is that um, I don't know about other people. Me personally, it doesn't—it's not much effort to create something that people can enjoy. It's not like you have to, you know, like paint a painting or like mm. yeah, just go on stage to say words. And you get to keep doing it too. Yeah, and if it's bad, you just get off stage. And yeah, uh, yeah, right. Hopefully, no one remembers. That's not too dissimilar to what we do. We just sit here, we have <laughs> microphones. If we don't like it, we just delete the shit, and then no one else ever has mm, to hear about it. That's what I do. I go in and delete m- the memory of me. <laughs> <laughs> mine. Have you two ever bombed before? Is there ever? A, do, you, do you have a bomb story? Never. Never? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, okay. look, once or twice, I, I feel like it doesn't happen that much anymore. Yeah. And I feel like part of that is I'm very lazy, and I only go to rooms, which I know uh, the room runner does a good job curating the room. It's a good MC, so I yep. know it's going to be a fun night. Mm. So even if I'm a bit shit, it'll kind of, like, it'll be a nice night. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but I have bombed once or twice. The thing I tell people 
is I was like, I've seen a lot of bad comedy over the years mm. and I really don't remember any of it. So mm. if you're so bad that people remember how bad you were like <laughs> years later, then you've <laughs> done it. You've achieved something. It's <laughs> almost <laughs> impressive again. It's almost it impressive. Swings back you around. come back around. <laughs> and I try and tell myself that, you know, if you do it, but it doesn't go well. It's mm. kind of like, I don't think anyone's going to remember this. So you feel bad for like five minutes and then you got to get over it. Yeah, yeah that's right. fair enough. What about yourself, Zeppo? Well, Alice oh, is always, very consistent. always bombing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, joke, but it is true. I um, I've had some of the best sets of my life on comedy stages, and I've had some of the worst nights of my life on comedy stages. Um, but it's all in the name of fun, I think. Yeah. Um, one that springs to mind was I took, it wasn't it wasn't a date as such, but I took someone I was interested in at the time to a show. Stop inviting and and dates you to your comedy. I should stop doing this. Were so you to one that you were performing? I was performing. And did they know first that date? this is a second date? They, they knew. First, um, well, it wasn't third. officially a date. I was keen. We were friends. It's a okay. whole thing. <laughs> different <laughs> podcast. Very smooth. Yeah. But basically, <laughs> we went different to the therapy show session. <laughs> and I had been booked <laughs> to the show because I'd worked for the show. Okay. So I wasn't even yep. at the level to be on the lineup, if not to, for the fact that I'd worked there. Mm. So already there are pro comedians, and then this guy turns up. And I did a set that was okay. It was a six out of 10 relative to me. But at the end of it, I thought I'd finish with a joke that she had told me to, to sort of impress her. Yeah. Mm. So I told her joke oh. on stage and it died so oh, hard. Oh, that's <laughs> tough. Probably my worst one, actually. Right. <laughs> she yeah. has Do you remember the joke? Do you remember the joke? Um, I, I'm not going to tell her. <laughs> <laughs> right. you, you can tell us off air. Yeah. You have a listenership and I think she might be part of I, it. I, so. I feel like you've just invented a really advanced form of negging. <laughs> yeah. It's like a really long to bring someone's self esteem now, yeah. and you're like, your by comparison, sucks, but I like you. <laughs> I don't. I'm not that bad. <laughs> That's did like you, your did joke. you follow it up with? Uh, that wasn't my joke. Yeah. <laughs> I, forget I left. I, I literally finished it, and I got Ran off stage. Off stage. Oh, that would be yeah. good because obviously, I think I hear <laughs> that, that would be good. <laughs> no, no, I, I hear that. I hear that <laughs> a lot of comedians. Good. People, you know, tell them, "Oh, you should do this on stage or whatever." Mm. You should do that. But okay, this is a fr- uh, joke that my mate told me. I'm going to mm. tell it and then just react and then I I'll did that. let them know that it's bad. <laughs> <How did laughs> I go did for that well? once. <laughs> it, went, it actually went surprisingly well. It was oh. a, my, my boyfriend had been trying to get me to do this joke for like a month or two. And was I finally it? did it. And it went quite well. Okay. But I think I'm going to say it was all thanks the to delivery. my delivery. <laughs> because <laughs> someone came up to me afterwards and they're like, love that joke at the end. I didn't get it. <laughs> but I still laughed. I was like, all right then. <laughs> See, to throw it back at you, I think you should tell that joke because I think I know the joke you're talking okay, about and I jo- like it too. I'll, okay, I'll tell you the go. joke, here which is it's 1950s sitcom dad comes home and he opens the door and there's all this group sex going on in his house and he slaps his forehead and he's like, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is actually good. That is good. Yeah. <laughs> that is good. to my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, buddy. (laughs) And when can people see you? Obviously, you're doing the WA Comedy Week this week. Yeah, they can see me tonight (laughs) in 15 minutes. (laughs) Post this. Where can people see you? When can people see you throughout the rest of the year? Uh, Oh, jeez. I actually hate comedy. I hate performing. (laughs) Uh, I don't want to do it. I only do it to leave. Like, I have a reason to leave the house and... um, You know, when people are like, oh, what do you do for fun? You can be like, I do comedy. And they're like, oh, that's so interesting. And you're like, yeah, I know. (laughs) Uh, But I don't actually enjoy it. So I try to do it as little as possible. Um, But if you look me up on Facebook, uh, I have a page called Alice Mack. Mm. And I will post when I'm doing shows. Fantastic. Very rarely. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I don't do a heap of stand-up these days either. But you can find my comedy business. We um, have shows running every now and then at laughdepartment.com. Cool. Um, or Did you say a comedy business? I used to run a few stand-up rooms around the city. There um, you go. Yeah, the day. Um, if you're looking for me personally, you can go to tinder.com forward slash Zeppo. You literally can. I just set it up. If yesterday. anyone wants a ticket to one of Zeppo's shows, match yeah. him on Tinder. And he well, if anyone you. matches with and Zeppo on Tinder, you. he'll probably just <laughs> tell your material up there. By the no, just in case you didn't get a clean cut of that, it is tinder.com <laughs> forward slash Z-E-P-P-O. Z-E-P-P-O. Perfect. <laughs> oh, Fantastic. Too good. Thank you so much, guys, for joining yeah, us thanks, here boys. on the Recobite Rooftop for the WA Comedy Week. Woo. Thank you, Cheers. boys. Thank you. All righty, boys. Last but certainly not least, up here on the rooftop at the Recobite for the WA Comedy Festival, we're joined by Jay Raymond. Jay, how are you, mate? I'm very well. How are you guys going? Good, fantastic. thank you, mate. Fantastic. You've fantastic. joined us at a fantastic time. The yep, s- just the after the sunset. It's very romantic. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> Jay's Drink, not even part drinking. of WA Comedy Week. He's just <laughs> yeah. Yeah. a day. I'm just up here drinking my Feral XPA, <laughs> going, looking at the sunset with his lovely boys, thinking, where's this going to go? <laughs> <laughs> well, the well, night is that, young. Yeah. <laughs> three is definitely company. <laughs> so you're obviously performing for WA's Comedy Week. I am. I'm one of the fresh faces. Don't let the grey hair fool you. <laughs> I'm very fresh. <laughs> very How long have you been doing comedy for? Uh, I've been doing it for just over four years. Okay, cool. But two of those years were COVID, so I don't count them. So what did you do yeah, before? Right. Um, I was actually working in a, um, a 
fuel station doing the night shift. Cool. It was so fucking working bo- on your bits. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I was just standing there looking out the window for six hours on end, waiting for the you know crackheads to come <laughs> by the meat pies, and I just write some bits. And after a while, I'm just like. Fuck it, let's try this, you know. <laughs> the, making the crackheads laugh. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Like, yeah. No one can make a crackhead laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Unreal. Yeah. And you're from Mandra, so oh I imagine yeah. there's quite a number of crackheads. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Peeling through. They don't make jokes about it for no reason, mate. It's actually, it's shocking. It's like the night of a living dead out there. So <laughs> shout out to our Mandra fans. There's a, <laughs> a fair few. Our cameraman tonight is a Mandra man, so shout out to Dylan, yeah. my boy, yeah. my Cam. <laughs> he, he's obviously not on the meth, otherwise... <laughs> Otherwise, the camera would be down at Cashy's. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you taken off with it by now. <laughs> so what can people expect to see when they come and see you, Jay? Oh, hilarity. <laughs> you know? Um, crack you know, bits. <laughs> crack bits. Oh, I don't have too many crack bits. The thing is, is because I'm from Mandra, people expect the crack bits. Okay. okay. And I generally open. I have an opener with a crack, but... <laughs> so many times I have to get rid of it because someone else would just jump in and go, who's from Mandra and start talking about crack? So you <laughs> yeah. start tepping on, stepping on my cracky toes, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, not too much about crack. I just like, <laughs> obs- <laughs> obs- I just like, you know, maybe a little bit before the show to like get my, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, get my enthusiasm up. But, yeah, not too much. Mainly about stuff, you know, from my childhood, you know. All yeah, right. cool. You know. So did you grow up in Mandra? Yeah, I've been living in Mandra. I actually moved to Mandra the f- same <laughs> night that the, um, the Simpsons premiered in Australia. Oh, so yeah. yeah, 750 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a very long time. It was actually 1990. Yeah, so, yeah right. very long time. So none of us there. were even nah. close to being born. Yeah, me, <laughs> yeah, me neither. I was, I <laughs> <laughs> Fresh faces aren't born before the 90s. Uh, <laughs> I like to compliment me on these... Um, Microphones too. It looks like the fucking Wiggles. Thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, all yeah, it's awesome. You, do you do you fight over the colours? It's like I'm blue. <laughs> yeah, I, we actually. He oh, really? We were setting him up, and I put uh, his one on the wrong stool, and he's like, "No, I just need to be the blue one." I think. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. I just do. He's got feeling a bit blue. Oh, I've got the <laughs> yeah. yellow one, like Big Bird here, so it's pretty <laughs> fitting. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you get into comedy? So obviously you were at the petrol stations. Oh, well, there was a fair bit of unlettered getting passed around. And yeah, you went, yeah, you know yeah. Um, ultimately, I used to, in my 20s, I used to be um, in bands. So okay, I was always, wow. a, always attracted to the stage. <laughs> and I like, bands broke up and I was sort of like in my mid 30s, yep. sort of going for a bit of a midlife crisis, you it's know? Early. Yeah, I'm just like, all right, I'm either <laughs> going to, I'm 35, my life sucks. I might kill myself or do comedy. <laughs> you know, so I chose to die on stage rather than, you know, <laughs> in the servo. But, oh, honestly, it's like, it's been in the back of my mind. I've always yeah, been right. a stand up comedy. But I just, music always seemed like, I always wanted to be a rock star because yep. of the cool factor. Yep. And after all that went away and I got into my 30s, I didn't want to be cool anymore. I'm like, <laughs> well, do the open mic thing. I can get back on stage and see where that goes. Yeah. And here I am now. Cool. So, yeah. What did you used to play in the band? What, were you an instrument Well, actually, when I was in singer? the band... Well, funnily enough, I was in death metal bands, right. and I used to do the like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my and I used to play the bass as well, but I was the guitarist, but everyone wants to be a guitarist, yeah, so right. I took one for the team, play the bass, you know, <laughs> so in I was in three bands playing bass, doing vocals in one, but you know, death metal scene is a bit of a tough gig, you know, yeah. especially yeah. if you want to start yeah. earning some money, <laughs> this ain't going to happen, <laughs> 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 or get any ladies that don't cut themselves, you know. <laughs> Well, <laughs> 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 gotta know your demographic. Yeah, you gotta know right. your demographic. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you do with yourself when you're not doing comedy now? Oh well, at the moment, I actually like um, comedy is like my main job at the yeah, moment. Oh, that and trivia. I do host trivia nights. No, I'm not yeah. making a big killing, but I just started. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like. I rather have my time and make good money. So I'm at home, barely surviving. But you know, I'm surviving. So. That's good. So at the moment, I'm just doing comedy, and yeah, I'm hoping it. to, you know, get the ball yeah, rolling right. and start making some decent money. I've just been doing the <laughs> shout, I just out, be, yeah, shout I out to all the comedians, all in the, the comedians. Yeah. But yeah, because I just did the uh, Mick was talking about how he's doing the mining site yeah, gigs. Yeah, 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 I've right. just been on that tour, oh, and cool. so like they actually gig, pay yeah. us. So um, that that's why I've got. That's why I can consider myself a working comic there at the you moment. Go. And I'm doing that. So you're working on mining site, like just like yeah, you go around to do the um for the FIFO boys. Yeah, you just go up to their site. Yourself is FIFO. Nah, nah, <laughs> you have to pass drug tests to be able to work out there. <laughs> oh. So, you know, I, I can only go out there as a visitor and then get off site. And how do the Mandra contract as well? Yeah. You're not allowed to be <laughs> It's in your bloodstream. And how do those gigs compare to like something like this, like a um, comedy festival? Oh, the mine gigs are actually the toughest gigs I've ever done. Really? You know, oh, really? Have you ever, like, you know, the whole woke thing, hey, you can't joke about this, can't yep. joke about that? Yep. Mine sites, 
are the worst by far because it's uh, um, corporate. Because it's corporate, and because okay. I don't know, they've had issues with depression on the sites lately, so they're very funny up there about what you can joke about. You can't say the c word, which I love to say right. in uh, yeah. jokes. You our know? our mum doesn't let us say it on the podcast either. <laughs> 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 I can never get thrown around like the most. Oh, well, the people a... who work there do, but it's oh. just because the people who are running it are so on edge. Yeah. You know about the, yeah. you know the whole are you okay and just just. Yeah. No one get offended. You can't joke about anything political too much. Like, yeah, right. just in case there's one person there that gets offended. So it was actually quite surprising. I was expecting it to be like a, like a rugby. Um, yeah, that's what gig, I would have imagined. It's complete opposite. It's like the most <laughs> I've had to clean up my act ever. Even like compared to places like Frio and yeah. everything, you know. So do they? Do you like? Um, will they just sit down and be like, "Oh, these are the rules or stuff," or do you tell them like, "This is what I'm going to say," and then they say, "You can't say this." Well, basically. Um, they s- tell us some of the rules, yep. but there's some companies, like some of the bigger ones, they literally wanted us to send us um, a script yeah, of okay. our set. And wow. doing stand-up, you can't really send a script because a lot of times you work off the yeah, crowd yeah. and that. So we just basically told them to fuck off and keep looking at the <laughs> rocks, you know. We'll, we'll do take care of the jokes. <laughs> we keep blowing up the indigenous artwork and, you know. <laughs> we'll just do the gags. Yeah, Thanks, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was a bit of an eye-opener, but, you know, it's like blood, they call it blood money. Any of the corporate gigs, you yeah. sort of know it's going to be tough, but you do it because it's like you, yeah, it's yeah. The, best, the best money you're going to yeah, get doing cool. comedy probably. Elite, yeah. what's the worst gig you've ever had? <laughs> Just not, not from necessarily a, a limited <laughs> amount of content. Um, well, there was one gig I did. They told me not to say the C word, and I rolled up drunk. <laughs> so, of course, <laughs> I just instantly started saying it. And then I did a whole bit Where about... Whereabouts was it? This was oh, this was a place... Co- no, this was in the mine site. It was a Como in Canning. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the, like the Como <laughs> Hotel. So we're doing a gig out there. No C words. So I started dropping the C bombs. And then I did like a joke. I don't know what I was doing. Eh? I think I was trying to piss the crowd off. But I did this whole big bit about how it's okay for Michael Jackson to diddle the kids because his music was so awesome. Right? So I, did, I went on this like... And like, you know, I thought it was funny. But afterwards... Um, yeah, um, the whole event got cancelled. <laughs> like, yeah, and like I uh, had people trying to fight me, like people were being held back. Oh, really? People were like, go back to Mandra and smoke some crack. <laughs> yeah, and like uh, I had I had to sort of like just leave because the people were fuming and like the promoter wouldn't talk to me for two years. And wow. Yeah, so that was probably the worst one. <laughs> <laughs> and that happened like within like three months of me starting, you know. Right. So, yeah. So you've cracked uh, on, not literally, but you've, you've <laughs> yeah. pushed on. The guy forgave me now, finally. So there you, you go, know. fantastic. So where can people see you? Post this week at the WA Comedy Festival. Where can people see? You? I'll come. Well, so I've got tonight. Obviously, um, this is my only show for the comedy week. Yep. But I'm going back on tour for the Mind Sites, and we also got a monthly. Mick was talking about the gig down in Mandra yeah, too. Yep, sta- yep. Um, it started two months ago. It's called the um, Mandra Comedy Club at yeah. the Brighton Hotel. Okay. Tell first. Friday of every month. Cool. Um, so, if even if I'm not on stage, I'm always there, like setting it up. But I'm generally like get on for five minutes. But it's a great show if anyone can get down there. And also, I'm working on my own f- um, show for Fringe Festival nice, called yeah. First Model Millennial. Fantastic. So keep an eye out for that. And it's pretty much what I got going. And just anything I can get in between, you know. Too good. Everyone here has mentioned Fringe. Fringe is huge. Fringe Where, is when huge. is Fringe? <laughs> yeah. Starts at the end of January. Okay, cool, yeah, cool. Yeah. Fantastic. Because we all we've been to a fair few fringe festivals, but I reckon the last time we went, I don't know, it wasn't it wasn't in summer. From memory, it was like in April. Oh, anyway, yeah, maybe that, that that could have been. The, um, they've got the P- Perth Comedy Festival as well. Oh, we got the lights shut off. We've lost power. We've lost power. <laughs> we've <Yeah>. lost <laughs> power. <laughs> Brian has just kicked out the power cord. Uh, <laughs> is that a sign? <laughs> the sun's gone down. All the lights are out. <laughs> well, it's we've got flashlights. It's <laughs> awfully dark down here. <laughs> oh yeah. There's a little bit of chaos. Oh, oh we're back on. That's oh, back on. right at it. Oh. <laughs> 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 there you go. We're getting a little bit of everything down here at the wreck of light. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he said Riley needs to taper it. <laughs> 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 Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you for having me, mate. Ray, I hope you have a lovely set tonight, and I'm sure we'll see you down Jay. at the oh, Jay, what did I call you, Ray? Uh, pe- you can call me Ray. People call me that too. It's Just Jay Raymond. <laughs> Jay right? Raymond. Ray Jamin. And whatever, make sure you whatever. check him out on Instagram at Jay Raymond. At, I think at Jay Raymond Comedy. Yeah. Jay Raymond Comedy. It's fantastic. Right, You'll right. be able to find him. He's the one with the Everybody Loves Raymond little yeah. display picture. <laughs> it made me have a genuine chuckle. Thank you so <laughs> much, Ray. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, King.
Alrighty, boys, that just about brings us to the end of another episode of the Mac Pack Podcast. Definitely a different episode to one that we've done previously. <laughs> yes, it was different. <laughs> You're not wrong. We normally do them at night. We don't normally do them on the rooftop in the city. No. And it's no. been absolutely sensational to chat with that many guests as well. I don't think we've ever had... Well, I think we've just set a record for the number of guests, the number of live I think we've laughs, yeah. and the number of lights used down here yeah, I know. at the record. I've currently got four absolutely beamers Five, going technically, on. yes. It's been going off. Um, and final shout out to my boy. And shout out, yes. shout, shout out to Dill. behind Dill. the cameras. Still has been an absolute, absolute the godsend the best coming down and help us out. Yes. It's been killing it. Yes. Yeah, so I think, you know, uh, we obviously gave everyone a plug before they finished. I think we did. You know, we just say it again. You know, these people will all have shows coming up. Yes. Um, if they don't, they'll be announcing shows soon, maybe. Or I'm they'll so. be doing the spots around locally. And it's just great. Get out there, support, support local comedians. Make sure you check them out. That's what these nights are for. Not necessarily this podcast, but the night. Everyone gets up there, does their five bits, and you can work out who's your vibe, who you like. And then and you can go see the full show. It's, like exactly. it's like going to Baskin Robbins and having a little sample. That's, That's exactly right. Before you get 100%. your months. And we've, we've gone and delivered you. We've done the Uber Eats aspect of that. And we've <laughs> delivered the comedy to your door. Yes. We do encourage everyone and any, anybody and everybody to make sure that you check out a couple of these absolute legends, as well as Colin Epsworth, who was on the podcast a little bit earlier in two months ago. Yes. Yep. Um, who... Thank you so much, Colin, for setting this all up. This has been absolutely fantastic. So cool. And shout out to the other comedians, Frankie Rose Thorne and Joe White, who were on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. Hell yeah. Yep. It's been absolutely fantastic. We've interviewed like 10 comedians over the last two months. It's a good hit, right, mate? <laughs> That's not too bad. Definitely a good hit. We'll shout, out to f- shout out to Feral. F- supplying the beers tonight for everyone. <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, it's mate. been good. So good. Going to lean into a few more. Right, well, it's 7.31, so the show is starting. The show is starting. So let's Some would say the show is ending, but <laughs> yeah. here's Joey. Joey's checked out. Um, and massive yeah, shout out to the team. The team at Recobite <laughs> for allowing us to use the rooftop space and reserve it up. We've had a fair few legends who have peeled up um, via the stairs or via the lift, seen it's us, and immediately turned around and gone straight back downstairs. Good so call. That, yeah, Great that's, call. That's fantastic. <laughs> Boys, it's been an absolute pleasure to do this until we do this at this time next week. We're doing this again this week. We're doing it Tuesday. No, not, <laughs> not this. Big news. We do have Sam Canelli joining yeah. us. He's a player oh, from the Perth Heat. Ooh. Um, so the stars don't necessarily stop this time next week. We've got Sam joining us on the MacPack Podcast. Baseball Elite. We chat about comedy this week. We're going to chat about sport next week. It's a massive episode next week. Um, hope to see you there. MacPack make a move. <laughs> oh, wait. Do the... Say the fucking... Say the, oh, line. Just say the line. Until we do this this time next week. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Stay blessed. Stay blessed. Stay blessed. Stay blessed. Go give your mum a hug. It's Chuffin' Out by Nofera.